Chinese performer, has performed at the storytelling shows Expressing Motherhood, Two Truths and a Lie, and was a finalist in Kate Banner's Funny Woman Festival. Her solo show, Snap, was an Encore Producers Award at last year's Hollywood Fringe. Let's bring her up with a big round of applause, Megan Dolan. Megan, please. <laughs> I am a strong woman of substance, <laughs> sober and free. Or at least that's what I'm shooting for. <laughs> I tend to take the long way around. A few months before my 30th birthday, after almost 10 years of sobriety, I get mad at AA and I start dating a drug dealer. So. Or as my friend JB so aptly puts it, um, you can't really call that dating. Yeah. <laughs> I get sober young at 21 and I make a home in the 12 step meeting rooms, church basements, coffee houses of West Hollywood and West LA. And I find much needed acceptance and fellowship and spiritual solace and I am willing to take direction. I do not have an intimate relationship for the first year of sob sobriety as is recommended. And then for the second year. And then for the third. <laughs> and this goes on and on and on. My sobriety and my singlehood seem to be intricately linked. And I watch as newly sober, willowy, wafy girls with the Rachel haircut <laughs> get involved with newly sober, brooding guys with pocket chains and Kangol hats <laughs> over and over and over again. And I watch this gawking spectator because I can't get a date to save my life. And I decide it's because I've gained a little weight. And then I decide it's because I have an unfortunate case of rosacea. <laughs> and then I stop deciding, and I just get pissed. <laughs> and that's when I start hanging out, or hooking up, whatever it is the kids are calling it these days, with a guy that I work with at the Cheesecake Factory, <laughs> who has big, deep, soulful brown eyes, he can quote Goodfellas and Midnight Run, and he's hands down the best karaoke singer I have ever heard. When he sings Creed's Can You Take Me Higher? It's breathtaking. He's also five years younger than me, he doesn't have a car, and he smokes slash deals large amounts of marijuana. But hey! I tell myself, it's just a fling, I can handle it. I'm a strong woman of substance, sober and free. So, a typical night unfolds like this. I'm in my Cheesecake Factory, it's midnight after my shift. I'm in my Cheesecake Factory uniform, which is white orthopedic shoes, white pants, mm -hmm. a long sleeve button down white shirt, flattering as hell. <laughs> and I'm sitting on Karaoke Boy's couch, watching him play video games with his roommates. It's riveting. And on occasion, they watch anime porn, which I did not know existed, and I wish I still didn't. And they are passing an enormous fluorescent orange bong, and each time it comes to me, I politely decline, no thank you, and because I'm waiting. I am biding my time, because I know that four or five hours from now, the frat boy-esque roommates go to bed, karaoke boy puts down the joystick or the console or whatever the fuck it is, and we finally go into his room, and he lights a wick sea breeze scented candle for ambiance, <laughs> and then we just fall into each other, and it is electric, it's passionate, and it fills this really deep need in me. Now this goes on for months. I am sleep deprived and unfocused. I stop going to meetings. My friends are concerned. And then one night, when the fluorescent orange bomb is passed in my direction for no apparent reason, I seize it and take an enormous hit. And the whole room stops. The video game is paused. No way, Dolan, that's awesome! Karaoke boy is giddy and starts searching for the perfect bong for me to use. And after much deliberation, he chooses one made out of a plastic honey bear. <laughs> I'm touched. And it does not take long before I am good and high. And I look 
at everyone and they all seem really far away. Like I'm looking through a tunnel and they're on the other end and they're laughing at me. And then I have this moment of clarity and I see myself as they see me, not a strong woman of substance, sober and free, but a pathetic, chubby, red-faced, middle-aged waitress. They're 25, so 30 to them is ancient. <laughs> who's just waiting around to sleep with their friend. And I make a vow that I will not continue to do this after I turn 30. And luckily, I get to pull a geographic because my mom has been planning and saving for a European vacation to celebrate my milestone birthday. So I'm whisked away to Paris, mildly, slightly depressed because I'm with my parents, but still, we land, we go to the Eiffel Tower, we go to the Louvre, we go to the Arc de Triomphe, and we're sitting in a cafe watching people stroll by, and I noticed that the Parisian women are stunning. Every single one of them. They've got this flawless skin, honey-colored swept up hair, and their, their pastel scarves draped and billow over their perfectly tailored clothes. And they are confident and, and elegant, and, and I covet them. And I don't even try to hide it. I just stare at them, agog, as I stuff an eclair in my mouth. <laughs> they are strong women in substance, of substance, probably not sober because they like their wine, but definitely <laughs> free. And I want to be them. And then I look down at myself and I realize that my very busy late night pot smoking video game watching agenda left little time for planning my European wardrobe. And I'm wearing, I can't even <laughs> denim overalls <laughs> in Paris, <laughs> which will be the name of my next One Room Woman show. But I'm not wearing them in an ironic, grungy way or in a wafy Kate Moss way. I'm wearing them because they don't constrict my middle and they make it possible for me to remain vaguely in denial that I've gained a little weight. And in the middle of my shame spiral, my mom snaps my picture saying, Jeez! And I, turn, and I snap back at her, Don't take my picture! And I storm out of the cafe, tears streaming down my face, and I'm speed walking back to the hotel. And I am approached by a small, wiry Frenchman with beady black eyes and big poofy hair who looks a lot like that actor Jay Baruchel from the Seth Rogen movies. And he says, Oh, hello! Are you American? And he sounds Indian, but... <laughs> <laughs> and I, I'm sure the overalls tipped him off, so I just nod my head and I keep walking. He says, oh, what is your name? What is your name? What is your name? And I don't want to be rude because maybe it's a traditional Parisian custom to speed walk with visiting tourists. So I say, Megan, he says, oh, my God, you were so beautiful. You were so beautiful. I show you the city, yes? And the guy says, no, that's okay. And then he slips his arm around my waist, and I don't know what to do. And then he says, uh, and so I kind of turn away from him and I go into this garden, because there's gardens everywhere in Paris, and he rolls right with me. He says, oh, oh, oh you are so quick, oh, oh, you are so lovely. And I know exactly what that poor cat felt like who got the white stripes painted down the back and was relentlessly pursued by Pepe Le Pew. And, and then I slow down a little bit and he grabs my hips, turns me towards him, thrusts his pelvis into me and says, I love you, Megan! And without hesitation, I push the pervy Frenchman and I scream, no! And I turn and I sprint back to the hotel. And that one immediate life-affirming action lifts my spirit. And later that night, we go to a church to hear some live music and I go to the bathroom and I notice a sign on a door that says, American AA meeting. <laughs> and I walk in and I sit in the back and they're reading the promises. We will intuitively know how to handle situations which used to baffle us. We will know the word serenity and we will know peace. And I realize that nowhere in the promises does it say we will find you a boyfriend or give you much needed fashion tips. <laughs> and I know that in this moment, the best I can hope for is a little peace of mind. So in this room, thousands of miles away from LA, I'm home and I get back on the path to become a strong woman of substance, sober and free. Thank you.